So, having finished our exploration of the mansion proper, we are left with our final location of the game, a place we know only as the Cradle Under the Star. Now, while we don't know much about this location, we at least know that it seems to have some focal point with the dark ritual that goes on at this mansion, though even the ritual itself is still very much a mystery to us. And speaking of ritual, it does appear that we are not alone down in this large cavern system. So it might be a reasonable idea to follow that cloaked figure and see if we can't figure out what's going on. The problem is that there is a little bit of a roadblock here. Very dangerous Doberman, though. It could very well be that his bark is worse than his bite. Really, there's only one way to find that out. Though you could probably have already guessed that we'll need to figure out some way to trick this dog into letting us by. Now, it seemed like he didn't have a problem with that cloaked figure before, so maybe donning that cloak we got in the storage room earlier would be enough of a disguise. But well, I'm sure this dog is too smart for that, so... Well, maybe we can confuse one of his other senses. Maybe his sense of smell. Yeah, we got that perfume earlier on in the game. And if we douse ourselves in that, that should be enough to allow us by the dog. Also, it gives us yet another clue the fact that Miss Mary is probably not on the up and up, in case you hadn't run into her previously. Still, we don't want to leave this cavern just yet. The uh, the cradle under the star under the star is not the largest area in the game, so we might as well fully explore while we can. Because we do manage to find a fairly grisly and depressing scene here, where we finally find out what has happened a lot. Yeah, we managed to not see her for most of the game, and her inevitable end here is on this bizarre altar of sorts. But Lot does manage to leave us a dying message regarding a switch inside the clock tower. And this will be very important to remember for later on. Still, it is a very, very sad scene, considering that apparently Lot was Jennifer's best friend at the orphanage, and... Yeah. As far as I know, and as far as I've been able to figure out, there is no possible way to save Lot. She is always going to be destined to die. Though there is one other situation that she can die in a little bit earlier on in the game. And I'll make sure to show that off in the next video. For now, though, well, we're still left to wonder just why is this place called the Cradle Under the Star? I can understand the star part, but this doesn't really give me the impression of a cradle. This place doesn't seem anything more than just a, a natural cave. And that, for some reason, is also filled up with cans of kerosene. That's especially odd, because most of the lighting in here seems to be from just normally lit candles. Doesn't seem like there should be any kind of gas-powered apparatus down here, but... I guess, all in all, that's probably the least odd thing going on down here. I mean, we, we're still left with a lot more questions than answers. We don't know how 
Mary Burroughs gave birth to horrible demon spawn. And hell, we still haven't even met the, uh, the other Burroughs twin. I mean, I, I guess we could still be assuming that there are two scissor men, but I get a feeling that maybe the other twin is somewhere down here. Yeah, we've managed to get more of an answer than we bargained for as we finally come across the aforementioned cradle. And believe it or not, this is the other Burroughs twin. Now you do want to make sure and run away from this guy as quickly as possible because something pretty horrible happens if he does get a hold of you and... Well, we do have one final panic event to make our way up this really muddy incline here, but... Well, it's not too long of a chase, and it's not too difficult to get away, all in all, because... It seems those boxes of kerosene did have a use for us, after all. Even though that explosion did get rid of one problem for us in the form of that monstrous Burroughs twin, it did seem to cause, uh, it seems to be an underground tremor here. Probably need to get out of here as quickly as possible, but the camera does pan over to show us that maybe, just maybe, that explosion wasn't enough to take care of the demon inside the Burroughs. We're not really given too much time to reflect on that. We need to find some way out of these caverns. And wouldn't you know it, Lady Luck has smiled down upon us with this elevator. And that, coincidentally, just happens to be functioning. Now this elevator will go up to all the floors of the mansion. But, I feel like we've already covered the first and second floor as much as we can. And Lot did mention that there was something of import importance up in the clock tower, which, yeah, as you can imagine, can be reached by pressing the third floor button. As you can imagine, we are not done with the Scissor Man just yet. We are quickly running out of places where we can run away from him. And, uh, as you can imagine, there is not going to be any place to hide up here, but... Lot did mention a switch. Clock Tower is brought to life, we bring an end to the deadly reign of the Scissor Man. <laughs> Things are not all in all ready to be ended yet. Yeah, 
just as we were about to meet our grisly demise at the hands of Miss Mary, we get a last minute help from some of the crows that I assume well, were because we managed to save that one crow earlier on. For some reason or another, we do manage to find Anne, to, Anne up here. She is only unconscious because we managed to not see her die earlier on. And with all that, we have finally taken care of the deadly Burroughs family and their murderous rampage. And we have finally reached what is mostly considered the best ending for the game. Now, if you're wondering what constitutes getting the best ending, well, uh, it's a little bit obtuse. The first thing you have to do is to make sure you find your father's skeletal corpse so that you can get all the backstory. Then you have to make sure that at least one of Laura or Anne manages to survive, which means you know, one of one of the other girls has to die, but yeah, you just don't look out the window for when the other girl screams, and you should be good. And once that is all out of the way, you can just continue on to the end of the game, and you get this lovely scene where uh, where the girl you've decided to to choose to survive joins uh, Jennifer for a lovely look out on the Norwegian landscape. Still. Not the only ending you can get, and I will be showing off some of the other endings in the following or the follow-up video to this, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this run through a very, very unique horror adventure game experience. Also, if you found any of the scenes interesting in the game, you will be happy to know that quite a few of them are somewhat uh, thematically based on a Dario Argento film called Phenomenon. Now, one of the things I find most interesting is that, well, the, uh, the larger, more disfigured burrows down there was in the movie Phenomena, and, yeah, as, uh, as you might be able to guess, he too went up in a fiery blaze, and then the, uh, his, uh, his evil mother who tried to cover up his crimes likewise tried to end the, uh, the lead actress named Jennifer's life by strangling her. And, well, you, you guys can look it up if you want, but needless to say, Jennifer was helped out by some animal friends in, the, in that film as well. So, if you do get a chance, I'd say go ahead and check that movie out. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. But yeah, I will go ahead and leave you guys to watch the rest of the credits. And hopefully you enjoyed it, and hopefully you stick around for the bonus video, just to see what directions the game can take if you decide to go some other route.